to our viewers as well. I picked up this device uh, last night that was uh, to give away, so as soon as I saw the post, I'm going to get this. It's an old TIAC, uh, a TIAC um, stereo system, hi-fi unit from the mid-80s. The guy has had it for 30 years. He bought this, uh, he bought this um, from Ballarat in 1985, which, yeah, he paid 2000 two grand for it. Had a CD player and a record player, but apparently, unfortunately, they bugged up. There's this blanking plate here. It's not actually a button, it goes here. The plate off, and I'm gonna fix that. That's only cosmetic. That's all right, I can fix that. Got a tape deck, one side's auto reverse, or logic control. There's a really good clean. Um, we've got a good tuner. This is actually a um, 200 watt per channel, uh, 200 watt tuner. Uh, amplifier, I mean. There's a tuner. It's all made in Korea. It's a good old, not the Japanese TF, but it's still pretty damn good quality. It's a shame the uh, CD player when the record player broke it up and it's all about years ago, but most of it's still here anyway. It's all, uh, this plugs in here. There's the three component systems here that are actually linked together anyway. There was no other component that linked through this cable. So it's all original here. I've got a, um, I could just use a Blu-ray player instead of an ordinary CD player. I can play MP3s and MP3 Blu-ray discs on this thing then. And it's got a good, uh, some like good turntable to sit in here. And this thing's complete. This hinges at the top are broken, unfortunately. I've got the top there though. Just dirty. The grills are long gone. The grill, uh, yeah, the grills are long gone. Birds have been eating the speaker comb, and they're going to paper mash this all back together. To fix that. You see, that's all that's going to have to come off anyway when I put a new uh, surround on, when I reframe them. You see how thick that foam is? I'm going to put it on, on the front. When I put a new foam on, I'll hide all that. So that's all right. I'll have to go in along here. I can re uh, paper mache, rebuild that bit. And uh, yeah, just get a new uh, reframe kit, fix that. Pull these out with a vacuum cleaner and just uh, redo that surround. Same with this one. These are tweeters, but I can replace those. I'll see if they work or not. If they don't work, I'll replace them. In mid range, I have to fix that uh, finger damage. The two, two main speakers they come with. They did have some other surround speakers, but they were like this. Little ones like this are what they come with. There's little surround speakers there. 8 amp, 16 amp impedance. This thing's just dirty. Just uh, giving it a good clean with the air. Just dust. It's been sitting in this there. And dusty old shed. Just all house dust. I'm going to try and pull this apart. Repair all this. Take that glass door off and wash that and clean that. Clean up the cabinet. The cabinet's in overall pretty good condition. You put your um, CDs and your records and tapes in these uh, cabinets here. And this, uh, you know, screws have come loose, it's alright. Anyway, I'll give it a good clean. I'll give a demonstration. The uh, buttons all don't work properly, like they need contact cleaning. But it does work pretty good. The backlight for the uh, LCD is blown. I'm going to fix that. Uh, pull the amplifier apart, clean those switches out. They're not that responsive, they work, but you gotta go like that for it to work. They did get better, I tested it last night. They did get better as I played with it, but I want to pull it all apart and clean it. The tape deck needs uh, belts, because that, that doesn't do anything. So that's gonna be a big fun project. It's all the one thing, T60, A60, and W60. That's all the matching unit. Quartz, pearl, digital synthesizer. We'll get our wireless and make control to the make controls long gone. Yeah, like I said, the, uh, and a playback only deck with um, reverse direction. 
I can see the motor there. The belt looks all right. I don't know what the rest of it looks like. But that belt would be um, uh, loose anyway. But uh, yeah, non, um, it's a, uh, a good type to the head. It's a four track head too. Four track head auto reversing deck. Good decks then. With a nice little head there. The pin shallows look all in good condition. Just dirty. I'm not going to play a cassette in that. It's just too dirty. Anyway, let's get this thing all apart and we have a good clean. Have a look inside. Just clean it all out and uh, those speakers will work like that. The surrounds are mostly intact. Yeah. I've got the other kit, the Taiwan speakers of the same size woofer, so I'll just get that part number off that in order the same kit I use for that, which will fit these uh, these woofers. Uh, one and a half inch size voice coil too. Anyway, let's get this thing uh, apart so we can clean it all out and repair it. Some uh, records, so it's uh, mostly clean. They're a bit dirty. The outsides are dirty. It's lucky they were mostly covered. I have to clean those really good before I use any of those on my good uh, turntables. You can see just how dirty this thing is. Oh my god, it's filthy. It's a really good clean. Something was sitting on top of that by the looks of it. Clean all that. Very grubby and grotty. They all need a good clean. Get to that display now. Replace the bulb so I can see it. Well, it makes sense why it's dirty. It's been, been from a smoker's house. That's just all nicotine. You can smell it. Mmm, it smells like a pub. Mmm. Makes you want to go to the pub and play the pokies now. Jesus, that smells like a pub. Like that rear projection TV I got ages ago, I fixed up and sold. Mmm. Smells like a pub. Literally smells like a pub. <laughs> yeah. Like it's from a very, like this was used in, in an Irish pub. Literally, that's what it smells like. Smells like it came out of an Irish pub. Mm -mm. <laughs> Let's get this cover off this amp. I've got to clean this. I'm going to clean this first. Oh, look at this one. Sam Young. Yep, definitely Korean made this. It's all Korean made. It's not the Chinese tier, so it's still pretty decent quality. How you try the marker fell? It's just three volts. D B six double eight D seven eighteen D seven eighteen A eleven A six. This one's been replaced. He did say hooked up eight speakers to it when he was younger. Had too much fun and blew it up, which was that stage there. He blew, which has been repaired. I could have made the heatsink. They actually shaved aluminium with a machine. They actually take cuts of the aluminium and peel them up like that. That's really cool. That's a cool way to make a heat sink. Aluminium, a uh, slab of aluminium, you just take a big gouge out of it. And that's your heat sink. So all this circuit boards don't have to be cleaned. It just smells like a pub. Good quality stuff, eh? Gonna give us a good douse and press there. And then you're just gonna um, contact clean all this. Contact cleaner, just bathe it all with contact cleaner. And take this front bezel off and wash this carefully. I don't want to. I can't scrub it because that silk screen will come off there. That printing. Off the soapy water, this front bezel. That is filthy. Do that. Uh... Oh, it's all painted. I could just wash it with a hose. Tip for there. That'll wash up with a bucket of water with soapy water. That'll clean up all right. Momentarily. This heat sink just snores of a pub. All that stuff there. Mmm. Not bad, though. Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. <sighs> it's all has to be cleaned. This is just for your arm, your tape deck, and your, your tuner. That basically sends the remote signals to those two units there. That's what these cables do. Everything else, they're not necessary anyway, because the remote's long gone for this thing.
That is filthy. Yeah, it's supposed to be, that's what he said, this thing is rated at 200 watts of output power. Which, yeah, they're pretty same chips used in our AV receivers you get now. AV ceramic receivers use those for amplifier chips, which is actually good, because I, I was thinking this would be just uh, two STK output modules, which is even better. It's good amp. So we've got it all, yeah, nothing burnt, no components, other components were damaged by the looks of it. Then again, they were replaced quite a long time ago, so they just look all the same now. Anyway, that'll clean up a lot. I'll start with that first, and then work on the tape deck. I'll do this last. That's the easy part. I'll do the hard part first, get these out the road. There's just, as I said, just belts. The belts have lost all that slack. The counter one works. The belt in the motor looks like it's there, but eh, I don't know. I don't know how well it works, so I'll pull the cover off and just have, a, just have an inspection in there. See what she looks like. I often do the same with this, take the front bezel off, clean it. Oh yeah, that's dirty. Do you see any great stereo that before? He's just surround. Take your speakers off. Bass and treble. These work a lot too, they weren't um, scratchy, so that's amazing. You're mixing volume for your microphone, your volume's here. No knobs here, just buttons to turn it up to control the volume on it. All the logic's in this front board. Those are this chip, and then 1001, 8BD1. Yeah. This was back when TAC was good. Earlier on, this I think this year TAC were making this stuff in Japan. Good stuff. As soon as they made this stuff in China, and no, I forget about it. I was a bloody junk. This, uh, there was a professional part of TAC, Tazcam, which made high end tape decks. Which uh, I think they're still, they released a new one, but it's just Chinese junk. Anyway, waffle, waffle. As you can see, the sort of work we're going to do here, just uh, give it a good blast of air and just a bathing contact cleaner. That way if I'm going to use this thing all the time my house is not going to smell like an Irish pub. <laughs> As I said, this thing just smells like a pub. <laughs> anyway. That's nice and dry, look at that. Oh yeah, barely a pub smell on it now. That's been sitting in the sun for the last half hour. That's nice and dry. Here's our uh, amplifier board. I've uh, spat it with contact uh, electrical parts cleaner. And boy, some muck came off it. I can see it dripping off dirty. Oh, that's better. It smells like this stuff now. Mmm. I actually quite like that smell. When it dries out and warms up over the time, that's going to give it a nice vintage smell. Mmm. That's all clean. This is all nice and clean. That's better. Look at that. Oh, that's much better. Feels so new now. Nice and shiny. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, yeah. big difference. Big difference. What a big power resistor's got a good blast. Just basically what gets hot. What's baked on took a bit more of a spray, but it cleaned it up nice. Anyway, put this back together and this is done. The was so far so good. Tap deck's nice and clean now. Look at that. The uh, heads are cleaned up. The uh, pinch rollers, eh? Boy, are they sticky. Yeah, I'm not going to use that. They have to be cleaned first. Just going to eat tapes for breakfast. Oh, they're so dirty. They're thin with EPMP3s and flat files for breakfast as well. They're that dirty. Um, this uh, dial there, I've got to uh, get one out of a car. A uh, instrument cluster. We have one of those. I've got wedge bulbs because it's uh, pretty much just a wedge bulb, but it's in a different format. It doesn't have the wedge in the bottom of it. I've just measured the voltage going to it. We've got 12 volts DC. It's pretty much a wedge bulb without the uh, moulding. It's just got like a, a um, screw or bayonet socket taken off it, pretty much. Yeah. It's pretty much a bayonet or screw socket light bulb, but it's made for this purpose instead. 
So I snip those wires and I get a wedge bulb, an automotive wedge bulb will go in there. I think it'll fit in there. I think it'll fit. So let's replace that. Um, I do have a blue one somewhere. Make a nice light to display up a nice bluish, whitish colour for the LCD. I do have some somewhere, but I can't be able to find them at the moment. So let's just put a normal one in there. Five watt auto bulb, wedge bulb, a blue one too. There's one already in there, but there's one problem. I think it's a uh, it measured 12 volts, but I don't think it's a 12 volt bulb in there. That was at night light. There was 12 volts coming out of that. So I turn this on, and it just lights up. So it's low current. That bulb bogging it down too much. I'm going to dial that from a valve radio, like a 6 volt, 6.3 volt lamp. Um, I've got to get a 6.3 volt one of those wedge bulbs. Or just um, get an LED and a resistor. I'm going to have to find an LED for that. I'm going to have to find an LED, I think. I can only just see it though. Well, I'll put it back together, now that it's all cleaned up. So we'll uh, set this thing up later and give it a test. That's nice and clean and dry. Plenty dry now. Yeah, I have to get LED for that. That's just not bright enough. But all brightness on that. There we go, viewers. Runs nicely. Um, they're 40 watt rated speakers in those cabinets. Made in Taiwan, 8 ohms, 40 watts. 50 watts it can drive per channel, so. So that's 100 watts. So that's not bad. Change that to 1 watt. 0.1 watt, depending on your volume there. It's simple. You pay zero dollars up front. We install the solar system. My balance, so. In a low energy rate balance doesn't do anything. The rest. To maximize your business's energy savings, talk with your superhero. That works. Visit MaximumEnergy.com.au It's Tire Power's massive beast to sale with more great deals on big brand tires. At Tire Power, you'll get the power of our giant giveaway on Toyota. I might just be the way I hooked it up on a tuna. It does work, it's just how I hooked it up. Yeah, I need to get a big bulb, a bigger bulb, I can't even see what it says. Get ready for the Halls Jayco 2019 Mildura Open. Play a no mono or what? I don't even know it's on mono or stereo. Can't even see it. That's round of the Halls Jayco Mildura Open tees off Saturday, April 6th and continues on the 7th with $4,000 in prizes to be won. Visitors can stay on the, of the device. with accommodation available. Book online or contact the golf shop on 5022 8089. It's all happening at the Mildura Golf Resort. Hold up. The RV Friday. Speaking mute. Must have board game for any RV Fridays fan. Not bad. Not bad. Get your online now and hit or head it. Yeah, I can mute it. Today, like that, and it works. It's a bit touchy. I didn't plug all my wires, and I'm pretty damn sure I did. The heat sink smells good. Mm. A very brief time away. Does it tell you something that the two most significant women in your life? But it works all right so far. Away from you. <laughs> Well, but you know what, through technology, you, you're just so close. I know, we're closer than ever. Closer than ever. Absolutely. So, anyway, there's one hurdle to my happiness. There we go, now the set deck works. Which is pretty stunning. It's that the restaurant's open too late for dinner. Works well, good. And you're going to explain I'll tell you what how, on the weekend. how that can yes. be an issue. Well, just generally, you know, it's... It all works. ...like us. Oh, oh, oh what about uh, this snapshot? And... They have a different word for everything. <laughs> One might have two tape, tape no. decks, so it's all right. No. 
Right. It'll be updated next. Easy and Kate, John, you heard. There we go, works good. Um, yeah, good talk. The talk's good on that. I, I checked the belts, they felt all right, so it's not. There isn't too much wrong there. I glued this back on. As I said, these are. Yeah, they're sticky. Waxy. I'm definitely going to clean that. Anyway, it works real good. I thought I'd take this app inside with me and just uh, give it a good test. Just to bit the verify. I'm pretty sure it's just how I connected everything up because the brother doesn't seem to do anything. It could be just that it's dirty. I'll give him a shot with some uh, contact spray actually. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, I should give him a shot with some contact cleaner. That would do it a lot of good actually. Anyway, that's a good work, a good sounding speaker to spot the bug and surrounds, but I'm going to clean these up, then I go order my reef foam kit and get these reef foamed. Simple job to do, easy to do. Bit of paper mache work and some, uh, that one's not as bad, so I can easily fix that. I'll clean the cones right up. And I'll clean up, that'll clean up good. Mid range and high range and low range are all working. Try my right ear. Sometimes my right ear can pick up more sensitivity than the left ear. Yeah, they're both working. They're all working on all speakers. What I'm going to have to do, as I said, run a bit of water with a hot glue just around that rim. I'll give it a go with some paper mache, I reckon. Since they still work, I'm going to try and repair that. They'll still work fine, they're not going to rattle, but just for cosmetic purposes. I'll try, oh, it's not going to look too good, but just to sort of hold together. Since they still work, if they really want to go, I'll just um, go to next time, I get, next time, when I go to Taiwan again, just get the same speakers here, replace them. The factory in Taiwan are the last speakers from, the last readers. The speaker uh, manufacturer workshop. I'll just get the spec those up, size and spec, take it with me when I go there, and order them over there, directly over from the factory. Yeah, that's a bit fun, but I can fix that. As I said, I can fix that. Glue it back together since it still works. I'm missing the top one of these, but eh. I'll probably make up my own speaker glues anyway. But I'll clean this cabinet up, fix those hinges. This cabinet needs a really good clean. Anyway, it's come up quite well. Thanks for watching.